All right, let's talk about graphing uh, secant and cosecant where it's a little bit more complicated. So problem number three is what I'm gonna dive into. So I am going to list out the important stuff that I need to help me with my graph. So amplitude's the easy one, it doesn't exist. Period in this case is gonna be two pi, phase shift, left pi, vertical shift, none. Now, I am going to off to the side here, as I did with the first problems, rewrite this, in this case, as a sine curve. So remember, sine and cosecant are reciprocals. And the important thing is, in this case, we've got an amplitude of three, period is still two pi, phase shift is left pi, and vertical shift is none. Now, you don't have to write any of this. This is completely up to you. You will need to get used to writing this out because these are the critical pieces for cosecant. Um, this is for sine. The sine part is to help me so that I can graph it accurately. Um, all right, so I'm gonna come down to the graph. Let me go ahead and label in my critical values here. Two pi, pi pi over two and three pi over two. The y-axis is already labeled, which is kind of nice. So I'm gonna put in, now I'm gonna do this in two pieces, so actually technically three pieces. I'm gonna do sine and twice. I'm gonna do the period and amplitude first, then I'll deal with the phase shift. Once I've got sine in its final location, I'll be able to use that to graph the cosecant curves. So let's go pink first because I'm gonna color code stuff, why not? So normally sine would be at the midline, up to your maximum, midline, minimum, midline, okay? Now I am supposed to move this whole graph left pi units, which means I am moving left two spaces. All right, and why do I know it's two spaces? Well, because pi is two spaces from the origin. So each one of these points, okay, I'm gonna shift left twice. And I'm just gonna use a little hash mark here. Okay, uh, so there's left, left, and left. Okay, so now I've completely moved sine to its final location. Now I want to be able to graph my actual cosecant curve. So any place sine crosses the midline, I am going to draw in a vertical asymptote. So there's one of them, there's another one, and there's my third one. Wherever sine has a maximum point, so in this case, positive three, I'm gonna match it. And cosecant is gonna curve up off of that. So up to infinity. Wherever sine has a minimum, in this case, negative three, cosecant is gonna curve down off of it. So that is one cycle of the cosecant curve for this particular problem, okay? So that's problem number three. I'm gonna go ahead and slide on over to number four. So this is a secant curve, which means I am going to be dealing with cosine. Okay, uh, I have a little space here. Let me slide that over there. Okay, so if we're talking about amplitude, remember that doesn't apply. Period here is gonna be the standard two pi period. Phase shift, none. Nothing is being added or subtracted to x. And, whoops, let's try that again. Vertical shift is gonna be up two. Okay. Now, again, you could list the pieces out for cosine. If you don't need to, you don't need to. Uh, what I do need to do is to label my x-axis. Uh, so 2 pi, pi, pi over 2, and 3 pi over 2. I just realized one thing I want to go back and fix in the last problem. Um, 
I labeled the positive x-axis, but since I shifted back, I really need to label the uh, negative x-axis as well. Uh, so just mirror what's on the uh, positive side. Just, you know, mirror it to the negative side. Uh, but yes, you really do need to label the x-axis for wherever your uh, curve is going to be. Okay, so back to problem number four here. Uh, let's see what we've got here. So I'm going to do the cosine pieces. And I'm going to see, no, I think I'm still going to do it in two parts. So I'm going to do negative two cosine of x. So that would be a reflection over the x-axis with an amplitude change of two. So right here, back to the midline, maximum, midline, and minimum. Now, every one of those points is going to move up two spaces midline there we go so now i'm working with those green um, curves or the green hash marks whatever you call it so i want to put in my um, vertical asymptotes and the vertical asymptotes here are going to be wherever you would have your um, critical values on the midline so right here and right here so let's go ahead and mark in those. Wow, I made that really tiny. So hold on one second. Let's go slightly larger. Better. Okay, so there's one of my vertical asymptotes and there is the other. So where's my curve? I have a minimum point here and I'm going to have the secant curve away to infinity. I have a maximum point here for cosine, so secant is going to curve up towards positive infinity. And I have another minimum right here, secant is going to curve down to uh, negative infinity. So that is the secant curve for number four. All right, I'm going to go ahead and move on down to number five. All right. So critical pieces of information, amplitude does not apply, period. Ah, we have a period change in this case. So we're going to take 2 pi divided by 4, which is going to turn into pi over 2. So period's pi over 2, phase shift, none, and vertical shift, down 1. All right. So let me go label the x-axis, one, two, three, four. This is gonna be pi over two, pi over four, pi over eight, and three pi over eight. Uh, the only other thing I want to realize that I made a comment about is there is a reflection uh, over x-axis. Uh, and that's because of the negative. So that still applies. So that's still something that you can comment on. Um, obviously, I don't have to write it, but if it helps, and it's going to help me, so I'm going to go ahead and comment on it. All right, so cosecant is the reciprocal to sine. So let's see. Normal sine would start on the midline. You would, in this case, because of the reflection, we're going to drop down to the minimum, midline, maximum, midline. But each one of these points needs to move down one space. So this little orange mark is now my new location. I'm going to draw in my um, vertical asymptote. So anywhere you have a... Uh, critical value on the midline. So generally for a sign, unless you shift it, and even if you shift it, you can still sometimes find them. Uh, you generally have three uh, mid, uh, three asymptotes. Let me get my terms right here. Uh, we've got a minimum here. So cosecant is going to curve down to infinity. And we have a maximum here. Be careful that you don't pick the other, like the X marks the spot one, because that was my first part. Uh, one nice thing about um, working with like notability like this, if you wanted to, you could go back in and erase things later on. I leave them to remind myself of what I did. So I know that I started with the X marks the spot for the period change and the reflection. Then the orange hash marks were um, for my vertical shift down one. 
So that's kind of where I keep them in place so I can see the pieces as I'm working with them. All right, I'm gonna go over to number six here and this is gonna be our last um, part for this video. I'll do problem number seven and problem number eight in the key. Of course, you can ask questions about them. Um, but for the end of this video, I'm just gonna do number six. So amplitude does not apply, <laughs> period. Uh, this is gonna be a standard two pi period. Uh, phase shift, we're gonna move right three pi over two and vertical shift none. So this would be two cosine of x minus three pi over two. So let's go ahead and mark the x-axis. So two pi, pi, pi over two, and three pi over two. Uh, cosine in this case does have an amplitude of two, and I said cosine has an amplitude of two, so that's just gonna help me graph it. So I'm gonna start with a little x marks the spot at uh, two, go to the midline, negative two, midline, maximum. Now I need no vertical shift, but I need to phase shift this thing right three pi over two. So everything is getting shifted right three units. Um, so let's go one, two, three. Uh, let's see, one, two, three. Now I'm gonna be a little lazy here and I am not gonna continue because I think I'm actually gonna run out of space if I try to. So this point right here that was at zero, two has now been shifted over to three pi over two, two. And this point that was at um, pi over two, zero has been shifted over to two pi zero. So if you look at the curve, this was our maximum midline, okay? So if we think about the cosine curve going the other direction, we would curve back down so that's actually what I'm gonna do here. So at two pi here, I'm gonna work my way backwards. I'm gonna curve back down to the midline, down to the minimum, and then back to the midline, all right? So this curve would continue, all right? So that's okay if you don't do it this way, just make sure it fits on the grid, okay? Um, so everywhere I have a critical value on the midline, I need a vertical asymptote. So one vertical asymptote here, vertical asymptote here, and last but not least, a vertical asymptote here. Everywhere I have a minimum, I'm gonna curve down to negative infinity. Everywhere I have a maximum, I'm gonna curve up to positive infinity. All right, so that should be the um, two secant of the quantity x minus three pi over two. Folks, if you've got questions about these, please ask, all right? As I said, I'll do the other two um, problems in the key. If you've got any questions or concerns about them, let me know. Um, and if you do have any questions or concerns, stick around in Zoom or email me, but do something to make sure you're asking those questions because um, we are coming up Basically, we're over halfway through this uh, this unit already, okay?